aqui e vai... ...to the town of Chernobyl, on the edge of the official exclusion zone. Once through the barriers, I continue north about nine miles to the ghost town of Pripyat, and finally, just a few miles beyond that, to the infamous reactor number four. You need to reserve in advance with a specialized tour agency. You must bring your passport, and it costs around $160 a person for the day, including the van that picks you up from your hotel in Kiev. Sergei Ivanchuk, my guide, is waiting for me at the border of the exclusion zone, the Chernobyl checkpoint. Though they call it a dead zone, there are actually several thousand security and maintenance staff and scientific researchers who pass through every day, and everybody must exit via a radiation monitor that checks their exposure levels. So right now we are in Chernobyl, the capital of, of the exclusion zone. That's where the visitors, they make first stop. Uh -huh. Because and this, this is yeah, this is the only place where they have like a restaurant. Yes. So I was, I was, the, <laughs> I didn't want to ask. The important thing they have to do, they have to sign a paper. Uh huh. A release or something. Yeah. So s some, some of it standard: no weapons, drugs, no drinking. Don't smoke. Don't smoke. Don't right. inhale deeply. No open-toed shoes. No, not less skin showing, right? Correct. Okay. Uh, right, and stick with you. Do what you say, basically. Now, accompanied by my guide and a Geiger counter, we're ready to head into the zone. Usually, we turn our Geiger counters once we get into the, the 10 kilometers on normal reading. Usually, if you check, like in Kiev or other cities in Ukraine, 12, 14, 18 microorganisms an hour. Mm -hmm. Well, here it gets, of course, higher because of the contamination. Let's find out how the radiation levels are changing since while we are cl getting closer to the mm -hmm. power plant. But as you understand, it's not a deadly, 150. Wait, if we so come it's 12 to a, in Kiev and it's 150 here? Yeah, but um, if you take it with you on the airplane, you measure it could be 500, depending, you know, where you are. So, okay. acceptable still. So, it's acceptable. So you carry this around. What are, we, what are you learning from this? You're learning uh, different radiation levels. Okay, yeah, this is one thing. And this is the, the just warning you. Like, you can, you can be any places here. I mean, it, you have to have it with you. It's just... Because you can, uh, Let's say if you... There are places by the cooling towers, and you go, and there's a piece of stone, it looks like, but you st stay there, and the radiation is much higher. So this thing will tell you, hey, hey, move. Exposure, that's what we worry about. You don't have to be exposed to radiation. Mm -hmm. I mean, unnecessary exposure. After 25 years, the abandoned city of Pripyat is fading. Stripped by vandals and looters of everything from bathroom fixtures to scrap metal, while the forest slowly takes over the roads and decaying buildings. So this is a famous Pripyat playground with the Ferret Wheel. Here's a glimpse of the post-apocalypse. What happens when human life suddenly disappears from a city? So this is um, what would used to be a prepaid hotel. The only prepaid hotel name of the hotel was Polícia. It means like a forest, forest land. Can we go in? I will go in, still can come on top of the hotel and see. There's a nice view from there. You have to use staircase. As you understand, the lift is out of order. Yeah. <laughs> Chernobyl power plant, just three kilometers from here. Oh yeah. 
And even from here, you can see some, some buildings are ready to collapse. So they've given up. This will never be inhabited again. Oh, that's for sure. Yeah, that's 100%. Believe it or not, around 7,000 visitors a year sign up for this kind of tour, and interest is growing. What kind of visitors do you get here? Uh, lots of students, lots of people who remember the time of the accident. They were like, probably of my age. And even younger gener generation, those that play Doom or you know, some games on the computer, so even then they start to come and they, they all recognize pre and the buildings and, uh, you know. Kind of interesting for them. It's on a video game, you're saying? Yeah, it's on a video game. Oh, I didn't know that. <sighs> so I'm doing a trip to Ukraine. It's my first time here. And I figured since I'm already here, it's something that was a big part of my childhood, hearing about Chernobyl and, and the opportunity to see it, I didn't think it's something I wanted to miss. I know a couple of other people who ended up in Chernobyl, and I just decided to might as well check it out one in the country. It's like not a usual activity for people to do. Where are we headed now? Uh, kindergarten. This was the kindergarten? Yep. And when they started the evacuation, they basically just left everything? Uh, in the kin kindergarten, yes. They took nothing out of sight, just... Right. And there's all the little beds for them to have their naps on? The, this was the older group, like for older kids. Uh huh. It's like a picture of a moment, huh? Yeah. It's the library. Where are the no-go zones here? Where can't we go in here? Um, out of respect, we don't go to people's apartment. But are there places that are so hot you can't go? Yeah, there are. Like school number one, hospital. It's still creation a little bit higher, so make, make, it makes people nervous. Music store? That looks like music store, yeah. Finally, we head a few miles up the road to the epicenter of the accident, the nuclear power plant itself. It's hard to forget that all that separates us from an underground lake of hot, molten, radioactive lava is a decaying cement sarcophagus that should have been replaced years ago. Okay, so this is it. This is reactor number four? Yes, this is the famous reactor number four. I mean, it looks like an old factory. What's the radiation levels? Here, let's check it. Hey, uh, it's uh, 340. If you let's check, you got the closer you get to the reactor, kind of the little higher it gets. Okay, let's go down to where you won't get, won't get that high. So what's this compared to when we were out on the road? Oh, it's four times more probable that it was on the road. Four times more? Yeah, okay. but a million times more. And what, a few hundred yards from the reactor? It looks exactly. good. And that does not look good. I mean, there's rust and it looks completely decrepit. The plans for building a more secure cover have been mired down by bureaucracy, politics, and economic woes as projected costs escalate every year. I'm not trying to be dramatic. I'm actually very curious because it is leaking now, right? I mean, yes, there is a potential risk. What can happen, the worst scenario, if the roof fall, roof fall down, it hits the bottom where the radioactive uh, lava is. Because of the impact, that could be an explosion even. This something is radioactive waste, radioactive materials. I mean, it should be scary. There is a 5 p.m. curfew for all visitors, but we managed to squeeze in a detour into the limbo land between the nuclear plant and the security checkpoint. Once home